Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Jeb and Flow here on the Street Parking Podcast channel. Hope you had a great week. Hope you're gearing up for an amazing week ahead. Let's start. Close your eyes if possible. If not, keep them open. Take a deep breath in. And a long breath out. Two more times. Fill your belly. Expand your rib cage. Slow on the exhale. Last one. Fill your belly. Expand your rib cage. Lift your chest. Take another little sip of air in at the top. And let it out. And here we are. Good to have you. Have you ever wondered how you can watch a competitive martial arts? If you ever watch that stuff, UFC, I'm a big fan of mixed martial arts. I think it's a a very pure expression of athleticism and there is sports entertainment, just like most other sports. So there are certain things that need to happen in order to get people to watch. And unfortunately, one of the things that a lot of people agree on that helps to sell a fight is to pump up this idea that the fighters don't like each other. Sometimes that's not real, and sometimes it is. And when you watch a fight, It's pretty clear when the fighters respect each other versus hate each other. You see it in boxing as well. You see it in team sports, but it's probably a little bit more apparent in individual sports where one person is competing against another person directly. But then after the match, after these guys just pummel each other, punch each other in the face and try to choke each other out for 15 to 25 minutes. They'll shake hands, they'll hug, they'll say nice things to each other. And it may look confusing to a lot of us. Like maybe that whole hyping of the fight was just totally false. More likely they respect each other a lot more, and they appreciate what their opponent has done for them, which is allowed them to grow and to get better and to get closer to the best version of themselves that they can get to. I hate to say that politicians do it because I don't, you know, it's hard to trust anything from those fools. But, uh, and, and these days I think politics is a lot different than maybe they were 20 years ago, but you'll see a debate, right, between two politicians and they'll just say really terrible things to each other and about each other and try to tarnish each other's character and tell them that they're unfit for office and completely incompetent. And then when it's over, They shake hands, they smile, you know, they get some photos, whatnot. If one politician wins a campaign over another, they'll call and congratulate their opponent for running a good campaign or for winning the election and that kind of thing. Again, could just be posturing, could just be something that politicians do to save face, but it could also be some sort of appreciation or their opponent, bringing out the best in them, provided they did run a sound campaign. Now, what if you're competing with yourself? How might that look different? Or what if you're competing with somebody that doesn't know you're competing against them? How might that look different? And what is this thing competition? I've talked about it before. We're going to revisit it real quick. 
but the word competes literally means to seek together. The word compete, when you compete with somebody, you and your opponent are seeking together. So you're trying to find something. Who is better, maybe, in whatever you're competing in, but maybe you're seeking to find the best version of yourself, to rise to a level that you would not have been able to rise to had your opponent not been there to challenge you. What if your opponent is yourself? So you cannot dislike your opponent if after a hard fought competition against them, win or lose, they brought out the best in you. You were able to perform better than you ever have before because they brought that out of you. How does that relate to life in general? How does that relate to our fitness? Well, the type of fitness that we do, the type of working out that we do, largely comes from uh, an arena where there may be some competitive elements, right? There, there is such thing as competitive exercise. People who work out competitively. Unfortunately, that spirit of competition has seeped its way into the recreational competitive exerciser that's training you know, one hour a day or less, 30 minutes a day, but training like they're trying to compete at the highest level or not recognizing that maybe this isn't a competition or not recognizing that maybe our ultimate opponent is ourselves. And it's not about trying to destroy ourselves in one training session so that we can say that we beat somebody else. What if it's just training? What if it's just practice? Don't let your workouts tell you how fit you are. That might sound like a very strange request from me. But 90% of the time, your workout should not be something that tells you how fit you are. It is not an assessment. It is not a test of your ability or your skills. It's an opportunity to get better. It's an opportunity to learn, and to grow. Now that other 10%, sure, use that as the assessment. Use that as a test of your fitness, a test of your ability. But if you show up every day thinking that you are testing and assessing your ability and allowing your livelihood to be affected by the outcome of said daily test, you're setting yourself up for a lot of discouragement and honestly, a lack of fitness. So allow your opponent, yourself, to bring out the best in you by choosing to grow and to get better and use your workouts as an opportunity to do that. So they've done studies. This kind of goes back to like the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset where they took a bunch of MBA students and they gave them a task. They gave them a project. Two different groups. The exact same project for each group. However, one group was told this is an assessment to test your skills and abilities. 
And the other group was told, this is an opportunity to learn, to learn new skills, to get better at the skills that you have to grow. So you can guess what happened. The group that was told that this was an opportunity to get better and to practice, they outperformed the other group. So they actually did a better job on the project than the other group. They had more fun, they experienced less stress, and they, um, they had an overall sense of positive outcome, which led to a positive attitude throughout that process and beyond. I think that's a very, very important idea to bring into our training, our physical training, our nutrition, <clears throat> our sleep. Don't let everything just be a test that you can either pass or fail or that has some fatalistic determinant of whether or not you get to be happy about it. Just use it as an opportunity to get better. That's really hard, especially if you're like me, if you're kind of an aggressive type A person or can be at times, it's hard to do. So that's the challenge. That's your opponent. Allow your opponent to bring out the best in you. What would your best self do? So I want you to go into the week with a mindset of trying to get better. Now, we have these vault workouts that come out once a week, and you can use those vault workouts to be your assessment, to be your test, to assess your fitness. You compare your time to the last time, but, you know, things happen in life. Things happen in life. If the, if the vault score doesn't go your way, it could be a lot of other things outside of just, I'm not fit. So I would say, pick three out of the 25 vault workouts, pick three. Pick three that you're going to use over the course of six months that will be your tests of fitness. And then in the next six months, pick those same three and you can use those as your, your competition, your, your opportunity to prove your fitness. To really demonstrate your skills. Everything else, it's practice. It's just practice. It's like Iverson, right? I think it was Iverson that said that. It's just practice. Enjoy that practice. Go deep in your practice. Have a, a positive outlook and attitude towards growing and getting better and learning new things and enjoying the process. Back to the action item for the week. If you're doing this Miranda, Julian versus Miranda challenge, think about, well, who the best version of yourself, right? They could, they could show up for this thing this week and they could log all of their points. It's not that hard to do. You can do it. So that's your best self. Are you going to let your best self win? Or are you going to rise to the level of your best self and do that? And if someone on your team maybe isn't logging their points or is struggling or you feel like they're, they're weighing the team down, what would your best self do? Berate them, yell at them, scold them, DM them? No. You would encourage them. Make them feel good. Maybe suggest listening to this podcast. Bring out the best. So it's not just our opponents, but it's our teammates as well. Bring out the best in each other. And seeing those points from team to team each week fluctuate, allow that to bring out the best in you too. So respect the other team. I know there's a bunch of healthy trash talking that we like to do. This is my favorite, well, one of my favorite challenges um, for that sake, because we do get to heckle one another and it's a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, as long as we stay, keep a good sense of humor about it, I guess you could say. 
So anyways, compete with your best self. Know what your best self is capable of. And then try to match that. Try to exceed that. Try to get better. Let your opponent, aka yourself, bring out the best in you. I love you. I'll talk to you soon.